There is a quote which says sometimes even complex problems have very very simple solutions. Similarly, sometimes great inventions can be made using simple concepts. There are many such inventions based on simple science concept all around us. Right from morning till night, these devices has made our life super easy and fast. For example, devices such as wireless chargers, induction stove are based on the simple concept of electromagnetic induction and we are thankful to Sir Michael Faraday for his discoveries in this field. Now let's learn about electromagnetic induction. This phenomenon was first discovered by Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday was an English scientist who contributed to the study of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. At the age of 13, he started working as an apprentice at a bookshop where he taught himself science. His talent impressed Sir Humphrey Davy, who appointed him as his lab assistant. While he worked here, Faraday met many scientists who increased his insights on science. Around the same time, another prominent scientist, Oster, discovered that electricity and magnetism are connected. He discovered this when he noticed that the needle in his compass kept deflecting after a current passed through a wire. Faraday tried to understand this by comparing magnetism to the vibrations of sound. Just as the tuning fork creates sonic vibrations of sound that travel through the air to make objects vibrate, then perhaps magnets act the same way by carrying electricity through the air. He performed an experiment to test this theory by moving a magnet through a coil. This generated an electric current through the coil and proved his hypothesis and this gave rise to the concept of electromagnetic induction. By using this concept, he constructed the first dynamo ever. So in this video, we are going to learn about electromagnetic induction in a different way. Instead of just focusing on theory, let's practically understand this phenomenon. Our aim is to study electromagnetic induction, that is how electricity is generated through electromagnetic induction and what are the ways in which electricity can be induced. To conduct this experiment, we will need a large bar magnet, two copper coils, each 50 centimeters in length, a few connecting wires, a galvanometer to help us record current being generated. Along with these things, we will also require a plug key and a rheostat. Now that we have all the materials we need, let's make a simple circuit. Take one of the coils and connect to the galvanometer. We will also need to note down our observation for each experiment. To do so, let's make an observation table, create three columns to record the activity we are doing deflections on the galvanometer and inference. Let us now perform a few experiments to learn about electromagnetic induction. First, let's take this bar magnet and pass it through this coil. But wait a minute, which pole of the magnet should we pass through first? The north pole or the south pole? Hmm. Let's try both the poles and see what happens. First, let's pass the north pole through the coil. Yes, look at the galvanometer. When we pass the north pole of the magnet through the coil, there is a sudden deflection to the left of the meter. This means that the current is induced in the coil and the deflection is on the left side. Let's note our findings. Now, take another look at the galvanometer. As I move the magnet away from the coil, there is a deflection again. But this time, it is not in the same direction as it was earlier. This time, the deflection was on the right side of the galvanometer. This shows us that depending on which direction the magnet moves, the direction of current and the deflection also changes. Now, let's try the south pole of the magnet and see what happens. See, 
there is a deflection again but wait it's to the right side which is very different from the north pole why is that so this means that the direction of current is reversed when the poles of the magnets change this means that the current is induced in the coil but this time the deflection is on the right side let's quickly note down this as well now as we move away the magnet from the coil guess what happens the deflection is seen again now this experiment is getting exciting so many things to learn while the needle has been deflecting you may have noticed something else the galvanometer is resting at zero even when i am holding this magnet inside the coil why is that so to answer this let me tell you about the change in magnetic flux this plays an important role in the generation of electricity and causes deflections let's note this too when the magnet and the coil both are stationary no deflection occurs because no current was induced flux is the number of magnetic lines passing through a surface there are deflections on the galvanometer only when there is a change in flux if the flux remains the same then there is no deflection so how do we change the flux simple just move the magnet back and forth through the coil like this ah my hands are getting tired from doing this but is there any other way of changing the flux i have another idea what if we hold the magnet still and move the coil towards the magnet let's try that yes there is another similar and sudden deflection shown on the galvanometer interestingly in this case the deflection is on the right side all the same it means that current is induced just as in the case of a magnet if we move the coil away from the magnet there is a sudden deflection in the opposite direction we get similar results if we make the opposite pole of the magnet face the coil we can note this as well if either the magnet or the coil is moved then there is a change in the magnetic flux and current is induced the direction of the current depends on which pole of the magnet is facing the coil let us now try another method to induce current in the coil we don't need a magnet for this but we will be needing a battery we shall make a circuit with a battery a rheostat and a switch as soon as we switch on the circuit there is a sudden deflection in the galvanometer again this happens when we pass the current through the first coil a magnetic field is generated around this coil this sudden change in the magnetic field in the first coil induces current in the second coil and this causes the deflection on the galvanometer let's note down this too when current is passed through the coil the deflection is on the right side meaning that the current is induced again now let's change the current through the rheostat the rheostat is basically a variable resistor as we decrease or increase the resistance the induced current also changes respectively and so do the deflections in the galvanometer but the deflection is only for a little while then it's back to zero again if we switch off the circuit then the deflection of the needle goes back to zero why do you think this happens when we switch off the circuit the exact reverse of this happens the magnetic flux disappears this change in the flux induces current and deflection in the reverse direction let's record this as well then everything settles down again this is how current is induced in the coil it's really interesting right let's take a look at our findings on our table we can clearly see that whenever there is a deflection the current is induced 
we now clearly understand that electromagnetic induction is the production of current only when there is a change in the magnetic flux. Now we know how we can light a bulb without using batteries. Why don't you guys try that at home? Keep exploring the connections between electricity and magnetism and remember, we stay curious.